Hello everyone, this is Professor Hasselman, and this is a quick video on how to turn a topic into a thesis. For all of my courses, uh, you have a writing assignment that is due, and for some of my courses, especially my History 107 course at MJC, and my History 105 online course, you'll have several assignments in which you'll be practicing writing a summary of historical events, including a topic, a problem, and a thesis. So in this video, we're going to talk about how you can make or turn a topic into a thesis. So let's go ahead and get started here. Let me hit the present button. Okay. All right. So the first thing that, that we're going to go through are the steps. And there are five basic steps on how to turn uh, your topic into uh, a thesis. Step one is stating the topic. Step two is stating the issue. Step three is stating a position or rationale, which basically creates a rough thesis statement. Step four is giving qualifications, which turns it into a real thesis. And then step five is testing whether or not your thesis is um, arguable on both sides. So let's take a look. All right, so step one is to state the topic under consideration. And this is really important because oftentimes students mix up the topic with their thesis statement. A topic is just the, uh, the basic uh, thing you'll be talking about in your paper. So for example, if you're writing a paper on cats, that's your topic. Writing classes or grades. For a history course, your topic may be the French Revolution or slavery. These are all examples of topics. So the first thing you need to do in when you're writing a rough draft and writing a thesis is to state the topic. That way you know what's clear and you know what you're gonna be talking about. Step two, state the specific issue in the form of a debating proposition. So if you're gonna be writing about cats, what issue are you going to be writing about? Or are you gonna be writing about writing or grades? or slavery, or the French Revolution, for example. So you need to state the specific issue in the form of a debating proposition. For example, resolved, cats should be subject to leash laws, or resolved, writing classes should be abolished, or finally, resolved, grades are unnecessary in college. Now, when you're in the form of a debating proposition means that this is the, the issue that you'll be talking about. So resolve, cat should be subject to leash laws. And then you list a whole bunch of things that you would like to resolve, which leads us to our next step, which is using a because clause to convert the resolution into a sentence that states your position on the issues and provides a main rationale for that position. So in the previous example, we said resolved, cats should be subject to leash laws. Why? Because they are inveterate wanderers. So we gave our not only our position, but we also gave our rationale. So why should cats be subject to leash laws? Because they are inveterate wanderers. Writing classes should not be abolished. Why? Because many students are unpracticed writers. Or grades are unnecessary in college. Why? Because students learn more rapidly without them. So all these are examples of ways you can turn your rationale statement into a position, or in your, excuse me, your issue into a position and a rationale. Step four, polish and refine the rough thesis by adding qualifications, using an although clause and removing the because clause. For example, Although it is against the cat's instinctive wanderlust to be restrained, the crowded nature of city life demands that cats not be allowed to roam around freely. Okay, so we said that it's res be it resolved that cats should be uh, subject to leash laws. So although it's against the cat's instinctive wanderlust to be restrained, so although we, we know that cats don't want to be restrained, our qualification for restraining them is the fact that city life demands, a set city and crowded city life demand cats be um, not allowed to roam freely. Although gifted high school graduates should be exempt from writing classes, most entering students need help in attaining college level writing skills. So again, we know that uh, writing classes may not be necessary, 
but our evidence shows and our qualification is that although they may be exempt from writing classes, a lot most of the other students still need a writing uh, writing class. So although maybe 10 or 12 percent of them may be may be graduating with and be exempt from writing classes, we still have about 80 percent who need them. And then finally, we have the idea of whether or not grades should be dropped. The we know that the it, the argument is that the traditional grading system hinders learning and stifles creativity. We kind of qualify it with the fact that although there may be a legitimate need to evaluate the work of college students, the traditional grading system hinders learning and stifles creativity. So not only have we stated our issue and we stated our rationale, but now we've qualified it with some piece of evidence that we're going to be arguing throughout our essay. And finally, step five, which is to test your faith in a thesis and explore potential counterarguments by reversing your position. So for example, the cat's independent and adaptable natures makes it the only pet capable of living an unrestricted existence within the city. Now, whether or not this is true or not is something that we'll have to argue in the paper. Now, although introductory writing classes may have remedial value for some students, most high school graduates possess writing skills sufficient for success in college courses, once again supporting the idea that you do not necessarily have to take a writing class in this case. And then finally, traditional grading procedures may offend educational purists, but public school systems require pragmatic approaches to evaluation. So although you may be arguing in this case that grading is not necessary, there still needs to be some way to evaluate students, which is what this is arguing here. Now this last step, testing your faith in the thesis, is a bit more advanced for several a lot of our papers. So really for, in this case, you only have to work on steps one through five when working on uh, basic thesis statements and your research paper towards the end of the semester. Finally, let's take a look at a little bit of review of the steps. Step one, remember to ask the question, what's your topic? Step two, what's the issue you'll be arguing? Step three, what's the rationale for your argument? Step four, how do you qualify your argument? And step five, did you test your argument? So hopefully all these steps in this uh, thesis machine uh, allow you to basically look at what you're writing, figure out your topic, figure out what you're arguing, and state it clearly in a very concise thesis statement with both qualifying and um, testing of the argument. And thank you again. This has been Professor Hosselman uh, giving you some writing tips on how to write a thesis statement.